In this video, we're going to have a look how to add some content um, after the first row of products on the archive view. So there we have the content that we want to insert. And uh, we're going to have a look at inserting that now. So no need to edit the template files. We're going to hook into the template. So to do that, I've set up the code snippets in order to enter the code snippet that we're going to use. And then what I've also done is headed over here to the Business Bloomer WooCommerce Visual Hook Guide. And if we scroll down, we can see where the hooks appear. And you'll see here we have this WooCommerce before shop loop item. And then we also have this WooCommerce after shop loop item. And what I've done is I've hooked into this WooCommerce after shop loop item. And here's just an example of how to use that. So what I'm basically doing is I'm going to hook in after a particular item and then insert my content. And the content that you can insert can be anything that you want. In this case, we just have this demo area set up. So to show you how that works, I'm going to head over here. And what I'm going to do now is delete all that. We'll save the changes. And when we refresh the page, you'll see that we're back to uh, the standard layout. So to get started then, let's head over here. And the first thing we're going to do is, of course, is create a function. And the function, so it's after, you can, and, all right, so that's the basic function. And then what we want to do is hook the content um, into uh, the archive after a particular row. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the add action. Um, add action. And as we said before, we're going to look at using the WooCommerce after shop loop item. Right, and then what we'll do is we'll also then just insert the name of our function in there. And then we'll end that filter like that. So there we have um, our, uh, our function basically created. Now what we need to do is to start putting the content together. So the first thing that we want to do is we only want to do this on the shop page. So what we can do is we can start off with something along the lines of um, is underscore shop. And that'll just make sure that whatever we're busy with here is only going to happen on the shop page. Now we could also do it as is category. Then what we were doing would only happen then on a category page. But we're going to head for the, um, the shop. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look. We're going to access the global variable, which is the WP underscore query. And that's so that we can get uh, the number of posts in the um, current um, archive. And what we're going to do now is have a look and hook into then after the fourth uh, column, in this case, we want to add some custom content. So what I'm going to do now is if and now we're going to access that variable, the global variable, wp underscore query. And we're going to say current post. And basically, we're saying if the post is the now the fourth post, now the count starts at zero. So when we use three, this is actually post number four then I'm going to just do something to test that we are ab actually able then to access that. So I'm just going to go echo hello, save that, and then we'll head over to the website, refresh, and now we should get the word hello appearing after the fourth element. So that's great. So now we know that we've been able to access um, the the fourth item and now we're going to add our content into that row. So just as a um, quick one then 
if we just go echo and I'm going to go uh, div, so you'd think, oh, well, let's just make a div and we'll end that div and then we're going to save and we'll head over and now we should have um, our row. So what's going to happen now is if we look at the structure here on the um, page, you'll see that that div has actually been inserted into the content of that last element. And what we need to do now is move it out of that. So the only way to move it out now is we have to break this um, this loop. So what we need to do now is put in a closing URL for this ordered list, and then we need to open up that URL again with that same information. So the first thing then that we need to do is we need to echo the closing URL or the ordered list like that. So now what that's going to do is, is close off and actually create another element, insert this element now between all the other elements in the post. And then what we also need to do is then we need to open that up again. Um, and this is very simplistic because the formatting isn't correct and we don't have all the right classes in place for this to work. So now we're getting something that's com a complete mess. And the reason for that is because if we have a look here, you'll see that the structure for that UL should be products column dash four. So what we need to do now is reconstruct that now with this opening element here. So what we need to do now is um, what we can do is we can just copy that. So we can head along here and head over to that UL, copy that, head back to Oxygen. And now we can do something along those lines and save refresh okay and you'll see now that even though we've kind of done this hack um we still don't have the desired outcome and that's because we're not meeting um all the requirements uh, for this to work so in order to make this work we need to make some other changes so one of the things we need to do then is um, just separate this out into different pieces so instead of using the echo all the time we're going to be working in HTML, so we're going to do something like that. And then what I'm going to do is remove that and then just open the PHP again. So now we're going to move, we're going to work strictly in our HTML. And here what we're saying is um, we have the div, opening div, and Right, so now what we need to do is just get this to fit in nicely into the, and we need to remove that. So let's get that to work nicely. So what we need to do to make this work now, of course, is add class equals and save. And now you'll see that when we refresh the page, because we've introduced that class, um, we've re-established that row. So now we've corrected the CSS and you're able to, it hooks out of that row, inserts our text, and then it hooks back into the loop and continues with the information. Now we can pretty much do anything that we like uh, within the space where the hello is. So uh, for example, and I'm just going to go style, you could use a class here as well. And here we can go um, with um, 100, percent um, border one pixel solid that color we can go border radius um, 10 pixels and then what we can do is we can also go margin and let's do zero zero the bottom let's put in a value zero so something along those lines and what we might also want to do is add some padding and let's make that 20 pixels and let's uh let's just see what we got so now when we go and have a look now you'll see that we have this text block and we have the word hello inside so that's pretty much how easy it is then to 
insert a content element after the fourth item inside a loop of products. First thing to do to remember is to add the HTML to close off that ordered list. Then we can insert our content and then we need to open up that ordered list again so that it carries on and pulls in the products. So at the moment we've said if it's is shop. So if I was to go to a category page, so let's go here and I'm going to look at accessories and you'll see that it doesn't appear on the category page. If I wanted that to appear on the category page, then I would have to change that to um, the category page. So to check if, if it is a product category, let's just get up close with the code here. So we can say if it is the shop or um, is underscore product underscore category and that will check if it's the product category we're going to save and then we're going to refresh and now you'll see that we have it appearing here and we also have it appearing on the shop page what you can also do now is be a little bit creative and maybe create different content for the shop page different content for the category page so we can start off here with if that is the shop and then we can create a new section here and we can say if this is a product category and maybe what we'll do here is we'll make that red we'll save so what will happen now is that if we're in the product uh, the shop then we have this uh, the black and if we're in a category if i refresh this page now we have the red border so that's how we can create different co content for the uh, for the shop page and different content for a category page um, yeah so that's pretty much how easy it is then to insert content after the first row of products and of course by changing that number you can change uh, to insert after a different number of products so I hope you um, enjoyed that video and thank you for watching.